Hi, it's Dr. Sheffield here from Monetary Science, and we're doing one of the A-level parts you require practical today. And this required practical, you have to investigate the effect of a known variable on the permeability of a cell membrane. We're going to be using increasing concentrations of alcohol and seeing the effects this has on the permeability of some cell membranes. Uh, we're going to be using beetroot. The advantage of this plant is it's got, of course, got cell membranes, but uh, the cells are full of a purple pigment, and we can observe the leaching of this pigment out of the cells. Uh, the more the colour that leaches out of these cells, the greater the permeability of the cell membranes, and we can investigate how alcohol affects this. This practical comes in two main stages. The first stage is to set up some colour standards that we can use in the second part of our practical. The practical involves looking at different colours, different uh, intensities of purple, of uh, different intensities of beetroot pigment in solutions. So we're going to set up some colour standards that we can use to put some numbers onto this subjective comparison to colours. So it's a semi-quantitative practical. Had prepared here for us some beetroot extract. So that's simply a solution of beetroot juice. And we need to set that up uh, by diluting it to different concentrations. The instructions you'll be given by your teacher will be to set up 0% up to 100% concentrations uh, with an even division of concentrations in between. So I'll set up the 100% concentration to show you how to do this and then you need to repeat this for all other concentrations. So, because we've got a conical flask here, and I'm gonna use syringes so I can measure small volumes of liquid accurately. So I'm gonna give this a good mix to make sure the beetroot extract is nice and evenly suspended. There's so nothing sunk to the bottom of this flask before I pour it out into this beaker. Then gonna take five milliliters of this chemical. Uh, this is a 100% beetroot extract. This is my 100% beetroot extract concentration. So I take five mil of this, trying to use my syringe very accurately. Just gonna read off the line there to make sure it's accurate, which it is. And just put that into a test tube, which of course will be labeled so you know which concentration of beetroot extract you have. I'll show you the ones that I set up earlier, full set. So starting here, we have our 0% beetroot extract, that is pure water, and I've labeled that as per the method as zero. So it has a, a value of zero, an arbitrary value of zero. And you see the color standards increase, uh, going this way, up to 100% beetroot extract, which I've numbered to 10. So this is uh, zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10. So these are my color standards. We're now to move on and set up some beetroot discs in different concentrations of ethanol. So the second part of the practical involves putting some beetroot discs into different concentrations of ethanol and seeing the effect that the different concentrations of ethanol have on the permeability of these cell membranes. So let's look at how to do this. The first stage you're asked to do is to set up a water bath at 30 degrees C. So I've got here a large beaker of water. Uh, I've mixed some hot and cold water together to achieve 30 degrees C. We'll use this to control the temperature of the experiment. Water is an excellent thermal buffer. Uh, temperature is an important factor to control here. The pigment will be moving out of the cells by diffusion. Diffusion is, of course, affected by temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster diffusion will occur because the particles have extra kinetic energy. The next thing set up are a series of tubes with different concentrations of ethanol in. So we've got set up for us already some different concentrations of ethanol. We have 100% ethanol. We have 80% ethanol. We have 6% ethanol, 40% ethanol, and 20% ethanol. So as before, we're going to use a syringe so we can measure out our ethanol accurately. We only need 2 millilitres into the beaker. Draw up 2 millilitres. Just check I've been accurate. And let's put this into a test tube. This test tube then needs a bung placed on it and it needs to be labelled immediately so you do not mix up all the tubes. So I'll now bring in the tubes I made up earlier. So we have our different concentrations of ethanol, two millilitres in each tube, uh, and each tube has been sealed with a bung. We need to get these tubes warmed up so they're all the same temperature to 30 degrees C. So I'll place them now into the water bath. Uh, what I'll also do is periodically check the temperature of the ethanol inside the tube, I'll put a thermometer inside the tubes so I know that the ethanol is at the correct temperature and I'm not just going to measure the temperature of the water bath. So let's just check the temperature of one of the tubes of ethanol. So remove the bung, place the thermometer into the tube and check the temperature which is at 30 degrees C. So we're now ready to move on to adding our beetroot discs to the water bath. In this beaker, 
I've got uh, a load of beetroot discs that have been pre-cut for us. You may find you are asked to cut the beetroot disc for yourselves using a cork borer from beetroot. If you do that, you need to cut a tube using the cork borer out of the beetroot and then slice that cylinder into 10 identically sized discs. Luckily, it's already been done for us here. You need to remove the beetroot discs and blot them carefully onto a paper towel. The reason we're doing this is the beetroot discs themselves, as they've been cut, cell membranes and cell walls of the beetroots have been damaged by that physical action of cutting. Some of the purple pigment will have leaked out. That leakage of purple pigment has nothing to do with the concentrated ethanol. So by blotting on the paper towel, we are removing this excess pigment and eliminating this variable from the experiment. So we're now going to take out 10 discs from uh, the speaker here and blot them on this green paper towel. So now I've got my 10 beetroot discs. I'm going to place them into the tube of ethanol. We need to work quite quickly here because we'd like all of the beetroot discs to be in contact with ethanol for the same amount of time. So there need to be two discs put in each tube. And I say you need to try and work relatively quickly. As soon as beetroot discs are placed into the ethanol, we're going to place them back into the water bath as well to maintain the temperature at 30 degrees C. We'll then leave the beetroot discs in the water bath for five minutes. So here we go. Make sure the discs go into the ethanol and don't get stick to the sides of the test tube. So the timer's now started, we're going to leave these in this beaker for five minutes. Every one minute, you need to give all of these tubes a little shake. The reason for doing that is the beetroot discs sit in the ethanol, may well stick together, uh, and that will reduce the rate of diffusion of the pigment. And again, it's another variable that is not alcohol that's affecting the experiment, so we need to eliminate it. The other reason we want to give the, the disc a nice shake is that pigment will build up around the discs, reducing the concentration gradient between the beetroot discs and the solution outside for the purple pigment. And again, that will affect the rate of diffusion. It will slow down the rate of diffusion. And it's also a variable that we're not investigating in this experiment and we need to eliminate that problem. Give all the tubes an identical shake and return them to the water bath as quickly as possible. We'll repeat this until the five minutes are up. While we're waiting for that to happen, there is an improvement we could make. We've got different concentrated ethanol here, 20% up to 100%. What we are missing is a control, a tube with pure water in and no ethanol. So identical in every way, with two beetroot discs in it, two millilitres, but of pure water, so no ethanol. The reason we should do this, and it would be a good idea, you can compare the control tube to the tubes with ethanol in, looking for a difference between ethanol and no ethanol. That comparison will help us to prove that it is in fact the ethanol having the effect on the cell membranes and is causing the leakage of pigment out of the beetroot disc in pure water should be fairly minimal. So our five minutes are now up. To ensure that all the beetroot discs have been in contact with ethanol for the same amount of time, we were quick at the start in putting beetroot discs into the ethanol. We now have to be very quick at removing the beetroot discs as well, for the same reason to make sure all beetroot discs are in contact with ethanol for the same amount of time. So to do this, we need another set of test tubes. I've again pre-labeled these with the different concentrations of ethanol, 20% to 100%. And as fast as we can, we need to tip the solution, only the solution, into these test tubes, leaving the beetroot disc behind. To get as much solution as we can. So hopefully we can now see, we've got our experiment here with the test tubes, uh, starting with a less intense color at 20% ethanol. And moving this way, you can see the color tube becomes more intense, 100% ethanol. However, that's very subjective and we'd like to be able to put some numbers to this to make this a semi-quantitative test. Still using judgment, so this is still a subjective way of collecting data. So whatever I say, you may disagree with, you may have your own opinion on this, so our results for myself and to a different person may not be identical. So we're going to compare these test tubes to our colour standards. So compare 20% ethanol to the zero colour standard. Clearly, there's no colour in this one, there's clearly colour in this one, so they do not match. The colour standard number two, is I would say paler than our experiment. So again, they don't quite match. So I'm going to keep comparing. Colour standard four. And look at those two. They look like they match quite closely, but let's continue comparing just to be sure. Uh, let's have a look at number six. And look at that, six is perhaps a little bit darker. Four, just going back to that one again, is a little bit lighter. I can give this tube uh, an intermediate value between the two. So I've got four, I've got six, 
it's in between the two, I'll give it a value of five. So we continue that process, comparing each experimental tube with the color standards until we find the best match. Either an exact match, in which case we record it as one of our numbers from the color standards, zero, two, four, six, eight, or 10, or if it's in between two of the color standards, we record as an intermediate value. So here's my data, I've plotted a graph for you so we can see what it looks like, and we can see that as alcohol concentration increases, the rate of which the pigment has left the beetroot cells by diffusion has increased. Well, the reason for this is the ethanol is disrupting the membranes around the cells, the cell membranes, putting holes in the membrane, essentially allowing pigment that would otherwise be trapped by the membrane to escape out of the cells and leak into the ethanol. As already identified, this experiment involves an element of choice that's subjective and is made semi-quantitative by comparing to numbered colour standards. There is an obvious improvement to this experiment that would be a remove the element of subjectivity and that would be use a colorimeter. You could use a colorimeter to directly measure the absorbance of light by each of these tubes and that would give you a quantitative measure of the color intensity of each tube. If you could ask and provide an improvement to the experiment, one that would help remove the subjective nature of the experiment, then a colorimeter is the way to go.